Um, it's really important to believe in yourself and it's hard when you when you have something that people don't understand it's probably spent five six months almost every single night reading articles watching videos trying to see and kind of look into the future of what the drone industry could be I think at that time um, we in media were referring to you as a drone expert. Yeah, I think one of my regrets, um, probably the thing I regret the most right now is not moving fast enough. I wonder, the African drone professional. Yeah. So what's up man, how you been? I have been busy. <laughs> I've been very busy. That's a good thing. That's a good thing <laughs> considering we we've, we've come to talk about some of that stuff, isn't it? And yeah. When did I last see you? I last saw you after I quit my job. Uh, that was in November. Yeah. In November. Yeah. yeah. And you had just uh, published the book, yeah. which is one of the things we're going to talk about. Mm. But I mean, as is standard, we usually start with the question. Who is Tawanda Chiambaku? Because I know you pretty well, but people watching this, they might not know you. Yeah, so interesting question. I mean, it's always yeah. interesting to ask, <laughs> you know, who are you and that kind of thing. Well, I'm Tawanda uh, Chiambaku, like you said, and I consider myself a, a young, ambitious uh, and hungry um, entrepreneur, uh, yeah. born and raised in, in Harare, Zimbabwe. Um, and I've been privileged to be part and parcel of some interesting, uh, I guess, um, you know, from perspective of my corp my life in corporate world, and then moving towards becoming an entrepreneur. So yeah. I'm an entrepreneur at heart. Um, uh, my title, I guess, that I go by is yeah. the African Drone Professional, and um, a whole bunch of other things that come with that, like you know, author and licensed pilot and licensed drone pilot instructor, etc. Yeah, um, but first and foremost, um, I'm just me. That's great, man, and that's one of the things we were talking about before we started recording this. Was like, uh, I went on your LinkedIn, and they were like all these titles. And I was like, man, <laughs> I, I can't be the one reading this. And there were titles from before, before you even became like the African drone professional, right? And it was just like, who is this guy, man? He does so many, so many different things. And, and one of the things that I took away from your, from your LinkedIn was that um, you actually stumbled upon your career in drones by chance. So, you know, I'm, I'm super interested to hear what happened. Yeah, I mean, look, um, it really is by chance. Um, yeah. I would say that. But by chance, honestly, I think it was definitely, you know, God ordering my steps and just, you know, positioning me and, and just all the different things that I've you know been able to do yeah. I was working full-time um, but at the same time I was working on you know what we call side hustles now side projects yeah. with a good friend of mine so you know one of the projects we worked on was a fintech project and you know um, that led us to get kind of national recognition here in Zimbabwe yeah. uh, for our project and um, through that and that project not working out in the end uh, but that project opened the door for us to then get exposed to drone tech at a very early stage. Um, yeah. just when was this, just for context? Um, I think first time was 2015. 15. 2015, when it first got exposed to drone tech um, yeah. and just starting to explore what it could be. Um, and then taking the step of actually getting involved was probably about early 2016. Yeah. 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 So just for, for the people who are going to be watching, we've got uh, guys playing cricket outside. So you're going to hear a lot of banging. It's not that we've got like a torture center or anything <laughs> in the background, but it's just people playing cricket uh, here. But yeah, that's super fascinating. That's how you got exposed to drones. What then influenced this exposure where uh, you've been exposed to drones, but you're working, right? Uh, what, how does that become this is now my thing, I'm going to take the leap and eventually you leave your job and you actually start uh, your own company. How, how did that happen? Yeah, you know what, um, after getting exposed to drone tech, I spent a lot of time doing research. Um, yeah. I probably spent five, six months, almost every single night, reading articles, watching videos, trying to see and 
kind of look into the future of what the drone industry could be and in doing the research i got more interested in it you know it's not to say that i saw it and it just became a passion of mine yeah. but you know through research through then buying my own first few drones you know and that kind of thing and you know playing around with them and then being like okay cool let's get one that we can build on our own you know so we assembled drones and that kind of thing you know yeah. that then grew our interest in it you know and the belief that you know what this is something that could actually have a huge impact but at the same time you know you've got to make money you've got to be able to can't run away from those. <laughs> so the transition to move from you know this being an idea yeah. and being something that's interesting and exciting and has potential to become something to actually then getting involved in starting the company it took it took quite a bit of time yeah uh, we first started doing our own projects um, and as you know we started doing you know getting involved in drone racing and that kind of thing and we started Zimbabwe's drone first drone racing community and still the only one today yeah um, and we started holding events and you know we started then from there starting to connect with other people around the world because we saw that in Zimbabwe there wasn't enough interest so we're like we're gonna keep our interest going um, but in doing that um, there was no real like oh this is gonna make money in this way the events themselves they weren't making us money we were doing it because we just loved doing it yeah um and then now to move from that point we then said look there's a commercial use case here for drone tech you know people may not get it but we're going to start getting ourselves in that space where we're preparing ourselves for a time when people do get it yeah so then we started investing in our own uh, you know uh, drones commercial drones the, the more expensive ones so that you know we use now and the story to, to getting towards that is that you know i'm fully i'm full-time employed at the time um not earning a lot of money yeah. uh, just enough to get by and i'm like okay i have to do something so i started another business which i then used to buy the drone the first commercial drone so i'm working oh. i start another business and then, and then that, that money we we were able to then yeah. invest and buy our own you know and it's a funny story though, because people don't know this and I, I hardly ever talked about this but i actually started a shika shika uh business so i spoke to my cousin he was selling yeah. his car um and i was like look i don't have the money right now but i'll yeah. pay you a bit every month <laughs> I took that car found myself a driver <laughs> and Yo, the car on the road. <laughs> so for those who don't know what a shika shika is it's it's a taxi basically yeah. it's just a like an, an informal exactly yeah, taxi <laughs> this know. is even interesting to me uh, because <laughs> I've known you for a while, and and even I didn't know that. I didn't yeah, know that as well. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's fantastic. So mm. now we've we've started uh, drone racing Zimbabwe, which is something we're going to come back to. Yeah, mm. Mm. Um, you've you've built like a community of interest around uh, drones. You've become sort of the drone guy. I think at that time. Um, we in media were referring to you as a drone expert, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, drone because you weren't drone, drone enthusiast yeah, expert yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 <laughs> because yeah. you weren't licensed yet, yes. and mm -hmm. and and licensing was a, a big part of then you starting uh, your your own company. So mm -hmm. what opened your eyes to that? What made you then? You you started this company, the Mshika, You started the Mshika Shika business, right? Yeah. <laughs> the informal taxi, as we said. Yeah. Um, what made you then take that leap to Precision Aerial as it is today? Now, now we have Precision Aerial, which is like a formal company now. Yeah, yeah. So, so with that, I think uh, the transition really came in seeing where the world was taking drone tech. Um, yeah. We didn't have regulations at the time, right? And I could see just even in the Southern African region, South Africa had regulations, right? They had regulations as early as 2015. Yeah. you know and we started connecting you know through linkedin through facebook we started connecting with other people who were getting involved who are pioneers in the drone industry in their countries yeah reaching out connecting talking learning from that point i saw you know what it only makes sense for us to formalize the work that we're doing so i then pursued getting my license and pursuing my license is what really started setting a bar and separating us from just being enthusiasts and people who own drones and who say we can fly them and actually yeah. becoming uh, someone who's a trained professional who knows actually what drones can actually do and who is legally compliant in that space so i again had to save up some money 
Yeah. Uh, actually, a friend of mine also supported me in getting my license and gave me a bit of money to support just finishing off and getting my license. So yeah. I went and I got my license uh, from South Africa um, at a time when Zimbabwe didn't even have a means to get licenses. And when no one in Zimbabwe was really getting licenses, people were just happy to fly and do yeah. whatever they wanted to do. We then pursued, you know, setting up structures. So we became a formal business. We registered our business and we started then offering commercial services um, as, you know, Precision Aerial. So we established the brand. So yeah. Precision Aerial now is a commercial drone service company that's, you know, fully licensed and able to actually provide commercial drone services um, yeah. as well as consultancy now. So we're helping other companies to actually integrate the technology into their businesses and helping to grow yeah. and actually establish an industry in this country. Yeah. So, I, I mean, when you speak of consultancy, that is pretty clear. But then uh, the commercial services aspect, what are some of the things you guys are doing? Yeah, so we're involved in quite a number of things. Um, and now the more we get into it, the more we're streamlining. So initially yeah. we're involved in being a, a drones as a service business. Yeah. So basically we are drones for hire, drone pilots and drones for hire, right? Anything that you want, you know, we're there in agriculture, we're there in mining, we're there in, you know, yeah. uh, film and media, you know, <laughs> we're there in property real estate kind of projects, you know. But right now we've actually looked and now we're more focused on specific areas so we're focused specifically in areas like agriculture yeah. so agriculture we're doing large-scale aerial mapping and we're doing crop and plant health assessments you know using drone tech um, and bringing up on board the drones in the smart farming cycle right and drones are our tool that help us to actually be able to estimate yields to detect pests and disease on crops and that kind of thing and then yeah. we're also bringing crop protection services with our crop spraying drones so we have crop spraying drones where we actually go out and we spray uh, different crops, you know, be it your herbicides, be it fertilizers, be it whatever is needed yeah. uh, to, to help and support, um, you know, young farmers and small older farmers in Zimbabwe um, so that they can use this tool, which is a lot more efficient, right? Saving time, saving money and helps us to actually increase our yields as, an, as a country. So we're really yeah. focused on agriculture and wanting to grow that side of things. And we've done quite a lot in that space um, where now we can offer quite a variety of different services using drones in the agricultural space. We're also involved in construction. Yeah. So construction, we help companies to do kind of like project management. Um, so we help them track their project. So we'll take our drone and we'll basically um, map out whether it's a building or a road or a bridge um, over time. Yeah. and help them to get measurements, whether it's volume measurements, whether it's uh, the length of certain parts of the, uh, the construction process, or we create a 3D model where they can use that to you know, compare that with their initial plans that they've done for drawings and that kind of thing. Yeah. Or we're just doing inspections, where we're inspecting bridges um, that, and, and roads or buildings that are probably have damage or something's happened. It could be a fire, you know, it could be just you know, damage over time, or it could be yeah. someone trying to sell a building and they want to have you know a full appraisal of what their building's like so we bring in drone tech and that helps us to get data and information that's really really really, really good and then of course you know we we do get a call here once in a while from property real estate companies to do the general you know taking photos and videos of property developments but you know th we're not really in that space yeah. and we've also moved away completely from from film from cinematography from being you know, uh, guys who are there to take photos and videos, you know, yeah. for film <laughs> television. We, we've completely moved away from that. We consult and help others if they want to do that, but that's not really our space. We're really focused on the commercial applications. Then we're also moving into security. Security is massive and it's huge. So we're yeah. also now providing services where we help whether it's organizations and companies that are already in security or businesses themselves. Uh, it could be a mine, it could be a high value asset, it could be even the farms themselves and they want to increase security on yeah. their space. So we help uh, with that by providing the service, you know, through our fleet and through our, our pilots. Yeah, yeah. So, so there's a key theme there from, from the time you started talking about uh, the six month process of, of research. Um, Tamshika Shika, whilst you're still at your workplace, and now you're offering all these kind of services. That sounds like a, a lot of work and a lot of things. Uh, one of the things uh, that entrepreneurs struggle with is then balancing that because as I know you have a family, right? Mm -hmm. And so you have the demands of precision area and work and your passion. Mm -hmm. And then you have the demands of, of your family. Mm -hmm. How have you managed to balance that so far? Yeah, I don't think you'll ever get uh, a balance. Um, all the time. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't think that's possible. And I've heard people talk about it, yeah. but to experience it is something else. I think you take every day 
um, as it comes and you try and plan um, as much as you can and you have yeah. to build in time so I have to build in and schedule time for my family it's not going to happen on, on its own especially as we get busier um, with the work and the things that we're involved with my schedule is full you know yeah. and I can keep filling it or I can create the gaps in the space and say okay this time is set for this so I literally have to schedule time and make the time to make sure that I cover ground when it comes to spending time with family you know and being with them and being there for certain things yeah um i've, I've always been a you know a person where growing up the way i grew up i was like i always want to be there for my family I always want to be there for my kids and don't yeah. i don't want to miss the key moments you know whether it's at school or whatever that being their life and unfortunately in the last year because of being so busy i've actually missed one or two important things yeah and that's that hurts you know what i mean and yeah. it's like okay I can take that, but then I also then have to, you know, in my own self, be like, okay, I didn't make it for that. Let me carve out time and let's do this as well instead. You know, I'm yeah. not trying to replace and say, oh, that didn't matter, but, but I'm <laughs> trying to make sure that I put in the work as well when it comes yeah. to family. Yeah. So it, it's day by day. Some days, you know, I'm too busy to do certain things. Other days are better. So, yeah, balance is something that, <laughs> you know, it's, it's an everyday thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And as you said, it's, it's, it's a day-by-day thing. Mm-hmm. And I, I assume that's the case with, with work as well. There are days where you win, there are days where you lose. Mm-hmm. What are some of the, I wouldn't call them biggest wins you've had thus far, but uh, mm-hmm. the moments that you have where you're like, this is why I'm doing what, you're, what I'm doing. Some of the most interesting things you've done since you've entered the industry. Yeah, I mean... Um, for, for I think from the time we actually started getting involved with drone tech and seeing how it is going to have an impact and it yeah. is already having an impact um, here in Zimbabwe and in the region and globally and that kind of thing, we've always looked and said, okay, these are the kind of things we want to get involved with. I think the first such project where you know um, we wanted to get involved with, where I was excited about, was when it's actually die, it's actually die, 2018 uh, around March. Yeah. Um, at that point, you know, we had built up a community in Zimbabwe with other drone owners um, and one or two other, you know, licensed uh, drone pilots. And we basically, you know, wanted to help and support the Cyclone um, you know, yeah. um, uh, disaster that happened um, in Zimbabwe. And we mobilized 20 drones amongst like six, seven people. And yeah. we're like, we want to go out and help and support, you know, and we're like, this is why drones were made to be able to help with search and rescue and large scale aerial mapping. And unfortunately, because of just a rift in terms of understanding from the government perspective and not understanding um, that we're professionals and that we know what we're doing and the value that we're trying to bring to the table and yeah. the mistrust and probably not knowing us, you know, they're like, no, we don't want your help. We don't want to help. We don't want your help. <laughs> And we're like, what are you, people's lives are at stake. We could be helping, you know? So that was a thing where we're like, it it was, it was going to be probably our, you know, the biggest win. (laughs) When you talk about a win, I mean, we weren't going to make any money from it. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. We're doing all based on, you know, us just wanting to help and, you know, serve the country and help people. And it just didn't come through. And after that, we got a lot of call-ups from um, different companies, organizations that then said, come help us do large scale aerial mapping to map the disaster areas and the damage to the extent, you know, the extent of the damage and that kind of thing. So we still did manage to do one or two things in that space, but in the moment that we wanted to do it and where it mattered the most, we weren't able to. But it's things like that where we're looking at how do we use drones for good? How do we use drones to serve community, humanity? That's really the spaces where I'm like, these are the wins. You know, we have a lot of other projects that we've done and we've done stuff for, for mines and for all sorts of other companies and yeah. businesses. But the value add is in how can we leverage this technology for good? And that's led us to be able to do um, some really cool stuff. One of the projects we're working on right now is we're looking at supporting and working with the Harare Wetlands Trust. Yeah. And we're looking at how do we protect wetlands? Um, and you know we're talking about water sources and right now in Harare there's big issues to do with water right and you know either because of ignorance and not being aware of it but the wetlands are actually being um, they're being reduced they're being degraded whatever it is right and there there's a lot of encroachment happening because people are building on wetlands yeah but who's allowing you to do it it has to be obviously the city of Harare and all the people who are there (laughs) You know what I mean? And it's like they turn a blind eye to it. So we're coming in and we're using drone tech now to actually do large scale aerial mapping of one of the wetlands um, that are in Harare right now yeah. as a way to gather data and information, right? 
um, which will help to further the cause of the trust and this and their partners in how do we protect the wetlands so we're going to be able to see and give a report of the percentage how many houses you know to what extent if they come in yeah. other people are farming in the wetlands that also you yeah, know decreases also. what we're supposed to be getting from the wetlands and that kind of thing so we're going to be doing the, that kind of thing and that's impact for us it's using the tool to help. yeah mm. that's that's great man and you mm. speak of impact mm. there and i know mm. um as, as long as i've known you you've mm. been an an impact driven guy and so before we go to like some of the challenges and maybe regrets you might have mm. um let, let's talk about the zim flying labs a bit because i know mm. that uh that kind of segues fantastically into that thing where we're talking about impact and so what mm. is uh zim flying labs because i know you're like a director of zim flying labs but uh what are you guys doing there what's the opportunity there and why did you take that up yeah so so following what happened with actually die and the government not letting us go out and support we looked around and continued doing research and tried to see how are other countries doing it yeah. how are they able to you know go out there and actually get drones into those spaces and how come their governments are allowing them to do it you know what is it you know one we saw that we weren't visible first and foremost we weren't visible before the event so therefore, as, as a brand or, or what? yeah as, as a brand or as a community yeah as, as a brand and as a community okay um it's, it's hard to bring people forward and come as a community when us ourselves are not licensed and we're not actually ah, professionally you. yeah right so there's only a handful of us who are actually licensed and professional then there's a whole bunch of people who just have drones and call themselves pilots but they're not yeah. So, you know, the distinction now is that when you want to approach now, you know, anyone with an authority with its government and that kind of thing, you've got to come, you know, either as a professional unit, which is maybe just the company or as a body of people. So when you came as a body of people in ourselves, we don't necessarily have what it takes to do the to work. Convince, yeah. yeah. So with within our research and what we then found is we discovered uh, the Flying Labs Network. And the Flying Labs Network is probably the world's leading, and it's a huge movement. It's a big, big, big movement. Yeah, I've noticed they've it's got Kenya, they've, they've got a bunch of, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> of wings and divisions. Yeah. Yeah. So the Flying Labs Network is the world's yeah. leading organization that uses or leverages and develops drone technology and mm -hmm. robotics and artificial intelligence for good. So the concept of drones for good is using drones for the purpose of supporting humanity okay, yeah. in different ways. Um, some of the things that I mentioned as well, you know, disaster, man disaster management, healthcare, um, uh, things like, you know, e you know, ecological management and that kind of thing, right? So uh, the Flying Labs Network is a network of hubs, right? So drone technology innovation hubs that are now, we're now in what, 33 countries around the world, yeah. um, from, you know, uh, America to, you know, uh, North and South America to Europe, uh, Asia and Africa. Yeah. And we're basically an interconnected network where we share knowledge um, amongst each other around uh, use cases. In other words, how do we use drone technology? How do we innovate and develop it? And how do we create policies and standards around how drones should be used in the context for good? So for example, a project that's done in Kenya, right, like you mentioned, or in India or in Spain, yeah. right, where we have flying aids. Anything that they do in terms of a project where they're going out and saying, we want to use drones for good. So if there's a disaster that happens in India, a flood, yeah. a fire, anything like that, right? we share information and knowledge around the project. So we have access directly to that project, the data, the information, the type of drone they used, the learnings, the budget, and that kind of thing. Which means when we want to take a project into a project, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel, right? We're taking an existing model and yeah. we're localizing it, which ensures that when we do a project, the success rate is almost 100%, right? We are, we're going in there and saying, this is gonna work because it's tried and tested. And a project we do here, we also yeah. give access to the network as yeah. well. But within the Flying Lab Network, we have a platform where we teach each other. So we're doing skills development. And we want to make sure that in every country where the Flying Labs exist, that there are locals from yeah. that country who have the expertise and knowledge at a high level, at international world-class standard level, as well as access to the technology so that they can respond uh, to whatever need is there. So it's really about empowering locals to be able to do the work that needs to be done. Yeah. So often this is thinking that foreign is better. And yeah, it's too much of <laughs> that's that. a thing. That's right. definitely and the a Flying thing. Labs Network, uh, the founders of it, um, a guy called Patrick Mayer and Sonia Beshart, um, they were like, no, 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 we ha it's enough of this. Enough of this, or oh, we, we only trust it because it's come from outside the country, you know, and everything that's foreign seems better. Yeah. We want to make sure that the locals <laughs> in themselves, right, are the experts yeah. and they have expertise to do that. 
So they formed and started the Flying Labs Network, and now it's spread, and now we're growing, and now we have the expertise. So we, we do internal trainings, so we train each other as well, and we make sure that people are yeah. trained, they're licensed, they know how to process data, they know how to use the drones. We've got global partners now, so some of the world's leading, so the top four leading uh, drone manufacturers in the world are partners of the Flying Labs. Yeah. So we have direct access to even speaking to them about the drones that they develop and saying, no, we actually want you to modify that for us, and they'll do it because we're using drones for good. The, the world's top software developers as well are partners. So when we do large-scale projects, like the ones I mentioned, like what we wanted to do with the uh, Harry Wetlands Trust, yeah. we have access to software that a lot of people would have to pay a lot of money for. We can get it at a concessionary rates because yeah. we're using it for good. Yeah. Because we are saying this is a project that's going to help humanity that we want to use to help people and communities and yeah. locals. We can then leverage off of that and say, this is why we need to do this. And it's only for you know specific projects. Not like we have access to it all the time. But when but, we need yeah. to do something, we can pull you on can the network it. and move. So Precision Aerial is um, the uh, country license holder. So we applied, um, and because we're already involved in using drones for good, yeah. and using drones in what we've been doing over the years, you know, we went through the application process and we passed, and we were granted the license. So Precision Aerial is the one who actually runs. Uh, Zimbabwe Flying, flying Labs lab. uh, oh, in Zimbabwe as a okay. local thing. And okay. we're, I think, the fifth flying lab, no, the fourth one in Southern Africa. Um, South Africa Flying Labs has just come online now. We, we got in there before they did <laughs> and actually helped them to set up. Um, and then naturally what then happened is because I'm the founder of Precision Aerial and then I was named, obviously, and appointed managing director of Zimbabwe Flying Labs. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. okay. That, yeah. that makes sense. But mm. uh, there's, a, there's a sort of like a theme there where uh you're a guy who says yes to a lot of things <laughs> you said yes to, to drone racing um i just learned you said yes to the informal shika shika thing most people wouldn't do that <laughs> um you took on the journey um and now you're also like a, a co-author of uh two pretty fantastic books i've read the first one drone professional you you gave me a copy i was super thankful um uh, Super informative book. It's a number one bestseller. The second one is, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. The yeah, second yeah, one is yeah, as well. Yeah. Um, so the books themselves are interesting, right? Mm. But what's more interesting to me is like, how does this guy <laughs> get these opportunities? Like, how did you get to become an author in this book, man? Like, because that that to me screams a super well networked guy so I'm, I'm super interested to just hear how that came about yeah i mean look i i'll always be like you know it was it's it's really god leading and and just the opportunities that i've been privileged to have is just amazing and the story with the book is really a a journey of just you know connecting the dots you know and you only yeah. connect the dots looking back you know as as we know um when we started uh, the first book um how we came about the f when when i first started with with the drone racing what we did is we would do events and then we would also then take any opportunity we had to go and teach and educate All right so yeah. i remember we volunteered to do an exhibition at africa science week uh, must have been 2017 and 2018 as well and we brought kids from, you know, Churchill, from Roosevelt and a couple of other schools. Yeah. And we're starting to teach them, you know, the little knowledge we had, we started teaching it. And we're like, this is how drones work. This is what a drone is. This is how this is what's going to happen in the future and that kind of thing. So I started getting involved immediately in like educating. Right. Yeah. Um, that led to me then, you know, talking to when I was talking to people from different countries and around the world and that kind of thing. I'd always talk about the need to educate and empower and, and that kind of thing. And ended up getting into forums where, you know, I started writing my thoughts and ideas around education and the need to get this into the education system. Right. Yeah. Because this is the tech of the future. Right. That led to me writing articles around that. So I started writing articles around that uh, on my LinkedIn and people would pick up and engage with it. Be like, yeah, you're right. You know, that kind of thing. So people would engage with the content that I was writing and then yeah. they'd strike up conversation and start talking. And then I'd be like, oh, what do you do? Oh, you're doing this and that and that kind of thing. And this is at an early stage. So yeah. a lot of people now who are pioneers and innovators in, you know, different countries around the world, be it Nigeria, even in the US, the UK and that kind of thing, are people yeah. we've been talking to for years. Yeah. You know, when we're all kind of getting into the space, right? 
one of my articles got picked up uh, by this uh, American um, education uh, association called the M Education Alliance, which is sponsored by USAID. Picked yeah. it up, and then they said, hey, look, we want you to apply to come and speak here. So I applied to this thing, and they invited me to speak. So they invited me to Washington, D.C., uh, to speak at the M Education Alliance Symposium. I think that was now end of 2018 or early 2019. Yeah. Um, and they were like, we want you to talk about education because, you know, even in the States, there aren't people talking about what you're talking about, you know. And that in itself, that platform, then gave me, you know, a lot of more, a lot more reach and a lot of bigger voice and a lot more influence, especially as it related to drone technology and yeah. the need for education. Yeah. Um, that opened up other doors, opportunities. And now each time we would put out articles and information and started creating videos, people would engage and be like, this is amazing. Yeah. And we grew our network slowly like that. Right. What then happened is the person who brought the book together, uh, Louise uh, Jupp, yeah. um, uh, she's uh, from the UK, but she lives in South Africa. And she was looking around and you know, we had kind of connected, but she heard about me through someone else to say, look, if you're gonna, if you're looking for people who know what they're doing or who are like, you know, leading in these spaces, talk to this guy, All right? So she reached out to me, you know, yeah. um, and she's like, "Look, I'm putting together this book. I've seen some of the stuff you've been doing. I've had people refer me to you, and like, you know, would you be interested in this kind of thing?" And because, like you said, I say <laughs> yes to everything. I'm like, "What opportunity to do this?" And this is the first book where that's been put out globally, right? That actually yeah. looks specifically at the drone profession as a profession yeah. and then breaks down how uh, drones are being used in different sectors, in different spaces, how people can get involved. Yeah. So I was invited and asked to write a chapter about education. So I wrote in the in Drone Professional One, I wrote about uh, drones and the future of uh, drones, uh, sorry, drones and, and education and the future of the industry, right? Yeah. So I wrote a chapter about that. I took our learnings of what we've been doing in Zimbabwe, right? Yeah. Some of the experiences we've had, the challenges we faced, and also my thoughts and views about what needs to happen globally for us to really take hold of this technology and really internalize it and maximize the value for it. Yeah. So that's really how that came about. Um, the book now, I mean, it's got 16 professionals and you know guys in the drone industry who are pioneering in the different spaces. Yeah. It covers a wide variety of topics um, within the drone profession and different sectors and that kind of thing. And you know, we're grateful and we're thankful that when we put it out into the world, it, you know, it became a bestseller on Amazon uh, within you know a couple of months and it's been doing really really well um, uh, globally and now yeah. you know we've got it here in Zimbabwe as well and yeah and uh, two months ago we just launched on professional too yeah. and uh, <laughs> within a few, a few weeks that also became a bestseller so you know, really grateful and really fortunate. Um, but in Drone Professional 2, I was speaking about something completely different, not necessarily education, but really looking yeah. at what needs to happen to grow the drone industry in Africa um, and what our governments and our leadership and us as people in the industry need to do uh, to really grow um, the industry here. Yeah. yeah. No, man, that's fascinating stuff. That's fasc I'm, I'm, I'm super fascinated by the fact that you built this almost, not even almost, you built this global network really um, just from, from passion and just being uh, super tenacious like that. And mm. yeah, that's, that's, that's really great. That's really great. I'm proud of the fact that you've got two best-selling books now. I've read the first one. I'm looking forward to getting into the second one. Mm. But um, one of the things you, you mentioned there, um, I mean, you've, you've already touched on the fact that uh, in Drone Professional uh, 1, uh, the book goes through multiple professions and by extension industries, mm. right? Let's mm. talk mm. about that for, for a bit. Um, I feel like in Africa, one of the things that happens is uh, people are not exposed to these opportunities. Mm. And we've been talking about drones for a while now. What are some of those opportunities for someone looking to get into drones? I know you could go on for an hour <laughs> if I let you, but you know, just briefly, no. what are some of the opportunities that, that interest you and that you see as being in reach? Yeah, well, look, yeah, I mean, I could talk about this for a long time, um, <laughs> but some of the things that I'm really, or I really want to see, especially if we're talking about the African context and Zimbabwean context with the drone yeah. industry, is people recognizing that this is actually a profession that you can actually be in this and dedicate yourself full time to this and earn a good living uh, for being in the space. 
but only if you see it the right way only if you have the right perspective towards the technology yeah i talk a lot about the difference between a drone owner and a drone pilot and a drone professional yeah is we have so many drone owners especially in zimbabwe right people are not licensed they're not trained but they pretend to be right people who are professionals they pretend to be people who know what they're doing yeah and it's not really about the number of years you have flying operating a drone yeah and i tell people that you know you only can really count experience when you're actually trained on how to do things properly so you've been flying drones for five years but you're doing things the wrong way you're worse off than someone who starts today and gets their license <laughs> right in and a then, month or two or whatever yeah. it is and then proceeds yeah because you you don't know what you don't know you know what i mean so you've got to learn the right habits you've got to learn the different things that in, that get involved in you know that you need to know for the drone industry and for you to also be uh, a person who participates in it properly yeah right but when you move over to someone who's a licensed uh, drone pilot right the drone pilot itself is is just one aspect of the entire industry in scope yeah okay uh, a drone pilot is someone who is licensed to operate drones yeah okay. and, I, and i and i really yeah. think that's what people see yeah and beyond that but yeah go yeah. on yeah. yeah so so when you're licensed you're licensed to operate these different types of drones eh? so you're licensed to operate particular types of drones so you can be licensed to operate maybe multi-rotor or fixed wing and now we're talking about different categories of drones yeah so you getting a license is just a basic kind of entry level right for you to be able to say i know yeah. the requirements of aviation standards because a drone is an aircraft right yeah i know the aviation standards required whenever i operate a drone all right and i'll abide by the laws the rules of the air and that's really what you're learning yeah. but the drone pilot license itself doesn't teach you how to operate a drone all right in the context of the different industries so you're not going to learn about drones in agriculture or construction or you know uh, anti-poaching or you mining know, conservation all mining yeah, all yeah. those you're not going to learn that by getting your license you need additional training over that all right and you need to now go specific so drone pilot license is entry level that's your base yeah. then you need to get these you know other you know um qualifications or training um certifications depending on the industry you want to work in yeah. so ideally we should move to a place where we have drone pilots that are focused on an industry so you have drone pilots for agriculture drone pilots for mining drone pilots for telecoms drone pilots uh, for conservation and anti-poaching and that kind of thing right yeah right. but the drone pilot and we look at the system now when we go to advanced drone operations the drone pilot actually the work he does is like 20 percent of the work when you yeah. look at advanced ops right now we look at advanced operations i take agriculture we were, we were involved with right yeah so when we're talking about large-scale aerial mapping and you know looking at crop and plant health assessments the drone does the capturing that's it okay that yeah. accounts for 20 percent <laughs> of the actual work yeah what else is needed now is the processing of the data and information yeah. that we then take from the drone that's not done by the drone pilot yeah. that's done by someone who understands data processing okay so that's already another job okay that someone could be doing or should be doing yeah that takes a lot more time right and it actually has a lot more value than the capturing then you have data analysis again it could be the same skill set as the data processor but you also have someone who, uh, who does the analysis yeah. who makes sure that the information we've captured makes sense to the farmer at the end of the day yeah. no point in capturing yeah. photos <laughs> and showing him a map and be like there you go and then like how is he supposed to know what to do with that yeah you see what i mean i hear that right? i hear that so in that space right we're already saying okay you could be a drone pilot or you could be a data analysis a data analyst right or someone who processes data okay? yeah so people who do data science and that kind of thing people who do remote sensing people who are involved in gis those kind of roles are really important within the drone industry they're critical for the drone industry then you could be someone who's a gis or remote sensing or data analyst for agriculture someone else does it for other contexts you know what i mean yeah that kind of thing right then if we if we go back and look at the drone itself the drone has to be maintained and repaired so you could be a repair and maintenance technician very few people know this but there's actually a license you get to be a repair and maintenance technician for drones yeah right <laughs> no one in zimbabwe has that license no one right but you have people who will be like i know how to fix drones they're not trained they're not whatever they just tinker and they do this <laughs> but if they were to yeah. go and get and do things professionally and properly they could build a career yeah they, have they value would just, then know they have yeah. then they yeah. increase their value <laughs> then they know how much to price their products and services not just ah you know how to do this you know what i mean yeah right go and get a license become a repair maintenance technician so you can be in the drone industry and never fly a drone you never have to fly it right there's so many different roles that you can and then there's things like what we're doing now so now i'm a licensed instructor right so my job is to now teach and train other pilots yeah okay 
So we need educators, people who educate people about drones. That can be a career in itself. You see, so those are some of the things that I'm always like, guys, there's so much more into this. There's so many different roles that we could have in this. So many, so many different things that we could do. Yeah. And the use yeah. cases are growing. There's so much more that you can actually do with this. There's software developers. There's a lot of software that's used in processing the data. So the people who develop software for drones. Again, another yeah. opportunity. Yeah, it, it, it does yeah. seem like <laughs> it's, it's really the opportunities are endless and people have kind of been uh narrow sighted but you talked about uh teaching and that's not the first time you've mentioned that in this mm. conversation you're like super passionate about that again something mm. again you said yes to right mm. and um you've currently got a program i think it's called drones for education correct mm. me if i'm wrong mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> where you're, you're doing that can you please talk about that a bit more and and just what First of all, what pushed you towards that direction? And then secondly, what you're doing with this program specifically? Yeah. So, yeah. So we've got a program now that we've just launched uh, called Drones in STEM Education. So yeah. STEM, Science, Technology, Engineering and Maths or STEAM, Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts and yeah. Maths. Yeah. Right. So that program is really a reflection of my heart towards uh, educating, empowering the next generation of Africans to move from a place of being consumers of technology mm -hmm. to becoming developers and innovators of it. Yeah. Okay. So much so often we're happy to buy cell phones, buy computers, buy drones and that kind of thing from other countries, Asia, Europe, America, that kind of thing. Yeah. But so few of us are like, can look at it and be like, no, 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 I can build my own. Yeah. Right. I can make my own. And for me, I'm like, I'm looking at the industry. I can see that it's still emerging globally. It's still at its infancy. Right? Yeah. And the only difference between the people who are developing and who are leading in the drone space yeah. and us really is the mindset. It's the mindset around the technology. Right? Yeah. You'll find that some, a lot of the solutions that are being sold, which unfortunately our governments look out and like, oh, that's so amazing. People yeah. are selling <laughs> us their prototypes and their ideas from mm -hmm. Europe, from Germany. <laughs> <laughs> so, so do you mean to say we're essentially refining their work until they reach that place 100%. where they're like standard bearers exactly. there are no standard exactly. bearers per se yes <laughs> so a lot of the drones that are up there they're prototypes of their ideas so people have gone into they went into a room they created this drone they now they know how to market and sell it and they sell it to you but what they're actually doing they're actually using you to gather data and information to improve on that product yeah do you see what i mean whereas we're happy to be like oh it's amazing it's new it <laughs> works let's bring it but you're a test bed yeah so africa is a massive test bed for drone tech it's crazy how, how much of the world's leading drone technology developments and the drones that we get all excited about were developed here and tested in Africa, yeah. right? By Africans. Yeah. But, I mean, not by, not by Africans, by foreigners in Africa. In Africa. But yeah. the Africans themselves, where are they? Where are the African innovators? Where are they? Would rather show off and say, I've got the latest drone, rather than look <laughs> and say, actually, let's break this thing down. Yeah. Okay. And coming from where we've come from, with drone racing where we first looked at it and we're like let's understand the technology let's build our own yeah. so we'll bring in parts we'd assemble the drones ourselves and that kind of thing yeah. so we have an understanding that guys come on this is not something it's not rocket it's science. not rocket science right <laughs> you just guys have maybe have more money to market and to do certain things but yeah. we can do it so what i'm taking now is we're taking all our experiences the learning the understanding of what the future requires for this industry yeah also the understanding of the skill set we talk about jobs of the future jobs that don't exist yet. These are some of the jobs. This pilot, this the job of saying I'm a drone pilot, drone professional, data analyst for drones, didn't exist 10 years ago. Yeah. Okay? And a lot of the, the kids who are coming out of schools now, right? This is what they need. It doesn't matter which industry. If you're an engineer or a surveyor, if you don't know how to use drones, you're going to be left behind. Yeah. So we're taking all our experience, our learnings, knowing what's happening and what's required in the industry in the future, bringing that back and saying, let's get into the education system now and develop a mindset around innovation in the young people. Yeah. Let's teach them when they're so young to fly that they get over the excitement of flying, <laughs> right? And yeah. we, move, we move them over to then saying, let's build, yeah. let's code in this program. So our education program has three parts. We have a beginner's course, an intermediate course, and an advanced course. The yeah. first course, we spend a very little time on that one and we just teach the kids how to fly. So we have these drones like the ones that we have here where we teach uh, kids how to fly, we've invested in them, so we teach them, train them, and I'm training them on the same skills, right, and maneuvers that yeah. a professional drone pilot will be tested exactly. on, but they don't know it, <laughs> right? 
right? So by the time this child now is coming for the professional drone course to yeah. get the license, he'd be like, but I've been doing this since I was yeah. five, <laughs> right? So we spend time doing that. Then we're going to spend more time on teaching them how to code and program. So globally, if you look around the world, America, Australia, that kind of thing, yeah. there's now this program around teaching kids how to code and program drones to carry out autonomous flight, right? Oh. So no longer the pilot controlling it, but right, using computer code and coding the drone and telling the drone yeah. to go from point A, point B, point C, that kind of thing, yeah. which is actually the foundation of all this future tech, yeah. right? The autonomous. <laughs> so you talk about drone deliveries, you talk about, you know, blood and, and all this and, and that kind of thing, blood samples yeah. and anything that you can think about in terms of drink. The foundation is that. Yeah. We're coming and bringing it and teaching it. So this is the first of its kind in Zimbabwe and first of its kind in Southern Africa. Yeah. Okay this program that we're, that we're developing and that we've actually now launched. And we're super excited. The, the exciting thing about it for me is that we're doing it right here in Zimbabwe. Yeah. Things that you're like, okay, even if I go to the States, I might not even see and have opportunities to do this. Yeah. We're doing it here. All right? Yeah. And then the amount of interest we've, we've actually garnered just in terms of the launch, we've had calls from Zambia, from South Africa, from Kenya. Right? Before wait, we even wait, done wait, wait, hold up, hold up. Does that mean... <laughs> Do you mean to say that someone saying they want to bring their child as far as here just to learn? Right. So, so, so the calls we've got from yeah. Zambia, right? Um, when we did our first trial, we did a trial test kind of holiday yeah. camp in December. Yeah. We had a parent from Zimbabwe parent from, from, from living in Zambia saying, yeah. "Do you can you is there an online program or online version of this? Yeah. So my, my my child can get plugged in, right? Yeah. To this, <laughs> right? And we're like. No, we haven't got that yet. We're still figuring out our program. <laughs> We've had a call from another Zimbabwean parent living in Canada. Same yeah. story. Look, which drone should yeah, I buy for my Canada. kid? Can yeah. you, you know, because they don't have access to it. There's yeah. People in Canada aren't. It's not like a widespread kind of program that's yeah. available everywhere. Yeah. Right? But from Zambia, what we got was a call from a, you know, a person who is a parent, but they're like, can we partner? Can we partner with you so that you come here and we'll go 50-50, but we need this program here in Zambia. Yeah. Same thing in Kenya. <laughs> we need this in Kenya. When can you come? South Africa, same thing. They are now talking, okay, cool. Can we set That's up dates? Amazing. Can we yeah. do a trial? Can yeah. we do a project? But we've hardly even done anything in Zimbabwe yet with this project. Yeah. We just launched. You just... So the people who get it, get it. And they see the value. Yeah. And they see the future. Exactly. And we're trying to be like, Zimbabweans, we're here. Let's do this. And let's get our young people to shift in mindset. To become innovators. Yeah. Right? They, we can do this. We are super intelligent. We always talk about how intelligent is what we're like. Oh, <laughs> now this is the it. time to prove it. Exactly. That's true. That's true. And education, and I'm always in my heart, and you see how passionate about, um, I am about this, is our education system is broken. Yeah. The same way they're teaching school, maths, English, geography, whatever, science, yeah. the same way they were doing it when I was in school. Yeah. You can't do that. You know what I mean? You, we're no longer being relevant to where the way the, 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 the world is set up yeah. and the demand yeah. that runs out of there. So that's yeah. why we call the drones in STEM because we're taking drone tech and we want to build this into a program, not an after schools program, not a holiday program. We want it in the classroom. I want the maths teacher teaching maths concepts using drones. Using drones. And we're going to show parents, teachers how to do that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you've got the tenacity to do it. But, you yeah. know, one of the interesting things you said there, and I think something that people should open their eyes to, you talked about mm. uh, children being taught to code, to fly autonomously. Mm. And the scary thing there is that's the disruption of the drone pilot. And the pilot is the only thing people see. Yes. But already the disruption of their industry is in place. Mm. And that's an mm. industry in its infancy already. So that's that's yeah. a pretty interesting thing, man. Yeah, but yeah, 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 you've you've done some fantastic work. Um, we we've talked about a lot of things, um, but more on the entrepreneurship side. Do you have any regrets so far? And which is the second half to this question? What is what are the most challenging things you've you've faced so far? regrets and challenges yeah i think one of my regrets um probably the thing i regret the most right now is not moving fast enough um people yeah. you know often look at me and they're like oh you're a pioneer in this space and that kind of thing <laughs> and the context is you're looking and comparing in zimbabwe right because Zimbabwe, yeah. there aren't a lot of people who are doing it professionally licensed and are able to actually do the work yeah right um so in that context it looks like we've done a lot Okay, no, but yeah. in a regional and global context, yeah. no, guys, we, we, we haven't moved. <laughs> we haven't moved the way we should be moving, 
And I think there's certain things where I didn't move because I was unsure. Right? And I was looking too much at the Zimbabwean market and saying, oh man, this won't make sense because the Zimbabwe doesn't make sense. Yeah. Whereas, yeah. you know, it's global. Some of the things that we're offering and doing has a, a much bigger demand in other countries around Zimbabwe. Yeah. People will get it, like I said. Yeah. So um, for me, it's speed. I regret not moving on certain things. I regret <laughs> doubting. I yeah. regret, yeah, not, you know, taking more chances in yeah. this space. We've taken quite a few. <laughs> Yeah. But uh, those are the things I, I, I think I regret. Yeah. I mean, I feel like yeah. from the conversation we've had, it, mm. it does sound like you're on the verge of scale because when we're talking about mm. um, startups and, and entrepreneurship and uh, small companies' uh, growth, right? When you start to hear people talk about, hey, can you bring this here? Can we partner? Um, what should I get? And that's when you know I'm, I'm hitting a chord and it's, and it's something that you're not actively marketing you don't have mm. like a huge marketing budget mm. but you're striking within something that's uh deep within people to say hey man i'm going to put in the money you put in your knowledge let's go let's try to do, do this here mm. that's scale in essence and scale mm. is, is is really what most entrepreneurs are looking for so i do think you're on the right path and to the people listening <laughs> move quicker i guess yeah let's talk about the challenges what are the challenges oh challenges are many right so for our industry they're they're sort of uh barriers to entry okay yeah um obviously the cost of drones and that kind of thing you know um if we're going to do things at a proper commercial scale you've got to invest in big tech right uh, and drones are not are not cheap okay if you find yourself buying a cheap drone and you think you've got a good deal, it's a bad drone. Okay. <laughs> you got to pay good money if you want to get good output. Right? Yeah. Um, so the challenges we faced is, you know, not having enough capital, right, to invest in the tech. Yeah. Right. And having challenges with access to capital. Yeah. Okay. So Zimbabwe is a very difficult climate. Everyone knows this uh, to operate in as an entrepreneur. Extremely. We know that. Yeah. Um, and as a business, it's even more difficult with the changes in rates and values and that kind of thing, right? So yeah. you, you earn money in RTGS, but you can't convert it to US dollars. There's no way I'm buying a drone in RTGS. It's yeah. impossible. There's <laughs> nothing like that. How do I convert my RTGS to US dollars? I'm not a big corporate. I can't access this whatever thing that they do in that the, the forex, auction money. auction, auction so market. Do do? Where, do I, where do I get the money? Where are the solutions for the young people to be able to do this? And I'm saying this tech, it's all imported. No yeah. one's manufacturing drones in Zimbabwe. No yeah. one. Yeah. So everything we have to do, parts, repairs, everything goes out the country. So I have to import. I do a lot of importing of these things. All right. So where do we get the money? So some of the, the biggest challenges for us is we have to do extra work of trying to figure out things. Right? <laughs> Outside to of get your core focus. To get the business to work. <laughs> yeah. Whereas, I mean, the guys, you know, across the border, wherever it is, another country, they don't have to think about those kind of things. They don't have to go through some They're of thinking about through. their core product. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we focus too much on things that we shouldn't be focusing on. We're wasting us so much time, right? Yeah. As yeah, businesses, yeah. because of whatever policies are there in place and, you know, and things that are happening. And I'll speak very plainly about that, right? That the things, you know, it's one thing to say this is going to help you, but it has to actually help me on the ground. Yeah. Right? So our policies are not really where they should be, especially for a business. Um, so a challenge is definitely it comes in that. Another challenge, a big, big, big challenge, maybe our biggest challenge yeah. is the challenge of, you know, substitutes and you know the you fake things. substitutes fake things yeah right the fake ones right <laughs> so the fake ones are the people who buy drones go on youtube on google and go outside in the yard teach themselves how to fly yeah then tomorrow they've got a facebook page instagram i'm a drone pilot yeah and offering offer drone services, services. <laughs> where have you seen that before yeah. right so a drone pilot is, is classified under aviation. So a yeah. drone pilot is the same as your private pilot or your commercial pilot. Yeah. Right? So we actually call them commercial drone pilots. Okay? So we classify it that way. Where have you ever seen someone, right? Even if you buy your own private jet <laughs> and you teach yourself how to Take it first. You, don't, you, 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 have, you have no authority <laughs> and right to call yourself a pilot yeah. until you've gone and been trained and you've actually received training to say you know and you understand. You have a license. Yeah. And you have to have a license. How many drone pilots do we have here in Zimbabwe? Yeah. Hundreds, probably. Yeah. How many actual drone pilots do we have? Just a handful. So the biggest challenge we're facing is that whenever we go to clients and businesses and we're like, hey guys, we're precision aerial, we're licensed, we're experienced, we know what we're doing. We come there, 
right? And we're like, here's the value, here's the cost of this service. Yeah. Be it agriculture, be it mining, be it even video or film, whatever it is. We come there and we're like, here's the value of the work. They're so used to seeing the fake thing. Right? Which is usually cheaper, isn't it? <laughs> and, and the people, because they're not trained, they're not licensed, they're willing to do it for next to nothing. Yeah. Because they don't see the value in the work. They don't see the value that, oh, actually a drone professional is a job. It's not just to say it's just a tool. No, it's a job. So you should be earning a certain amount of money per project. So the value of our work here, it undercuts us completely. Yeah. The moment now we come and say, here's the value of the work. Here's the real value of the work. Yeah. People are like, no, you're too expensive. Because they're so used yeah. to seeing the fake stuff. <laughs> and that's so crazy mm. because you've invested money, mm. time, and yes. effort to mm. do things the right way, exactly. the professional way, mm. and offer excellency. Yes. But the other side of that is mm. you're too expensive now. Yes. <laughs> and now it's, it's too expensive. Whereas everyone else should be at our level. Yeah. If you're going to be operating should in the space. Sta- it, it should be industry standard. Yes. We should have industry standard rates for every single use case yeah. for drones. Yeah. And we're yeah, trying to yeah. set that. But people are like, no, no, that's too much. And we're <laughs> like, but guys, this is only, it's only in Zimbabwe where it's yeah. like this. The value of our services in other countries, oh, man, people will respect it. I mean, exactly. in South Africa, exactly. people will respect it and they know the value. And they're like, okay, no, you are licensed, you're, there, you're a professional, great. Here's the value of the work. We understand that. Da, da, da. Now, you, yes, you can compete on price. Someone can be a little bit more expensive, but you compete now more on value. Yeah. yeah. How you do your work. The add-ons, you know what I mean? Like th- that kind of thing. But here, it's and already Zimbabwe price is a price sensitive place. Exactly. Zimbabwe is a really <laughs> price sensitive market. So people are happy. Yeah. The businesses, large corporates, right? Your listed companies are hiring unlicensed people, unprofessional people who are also breaking the law. It's against the law for you yeah. to operate drones without, without the, license. the license. And but the so company by is extension, they are breaking the law. By as well. extension, those companies are breaking the law. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah, man, it is. Mm. That is the journey, I guess. That is entrepreneurship because we, we talk about the rosy things. We talked about a lot of things that are very nice that you get to do. And mm. inversely, there are always challenges. And yeah. I feel like it's always important to like highlight those. But, you know, like going now towards the end of our interview or conversation, really, and ending it off on a lighter note, you know, um, it's, it's two things I want to talk about. Uh, one is YouTube. We're going to talk about that briefly. <laughs> You've got YouTube. Again, another thing you said yes to. <laughs> uh, and then we're going to talk about your taste in drones specifically. But let's talk about YouTube first. Um, that's another avenue for you guys to be doing. I don't know. It could be marketing. It could be educating. Uh, what's, what's, what's your view of that? Why does Precision Aerial have a YouTube page? And... What convinced you that that was something that's necessary? Yeah, so we actually have three YouTube channels. Um, I knew of one. <laughs> <laughs> Shamelessly plug yourself. <laughs> Shamelessly plug yourself. So <laughs> the main one is actually African Drum Professional. Uh, uh-huh. That's my main channel. So that channel, I use it to share information and knowledge yeah. with people who are, first of all, Zimbabweans and then also Africans. Yeah. Across Africa. So I, I am privileged in that I have a very good understanding of the drone industries in a lot of the countries in Africa. You know, I've visited a lot of these places. I've met with them. I've met with the civil aviation authorities. Yeah. We've discussed policies, regulations, developments and that kind of thing. Um, so I keep, you know, a good understanding of what's happening in Africa. Right? I know who's doing what. Um, so I share about how people can get involved in the drone industry in their different countries in Africa. Yeah. Right? So therefore African drone professional and, you know, so my reach is really Africa, but I also focus on, you know, sharing information to people in Zimbabwe. So people get it and, and learn to understand that yeah. actually this is actually a profession. This is how to do things properly. This is how you can actually get involved in the industry. And these yeah. are some of the things going on. So it's kind of a platform where I just share information. And it's there, African Drone Professional. You can go check it out. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll I, definitely link to it. Yeah, we'll definitely yeah. I definitely to try to post somewhat regularly. I'm not regular like all the YouTubers. I'm not there. <laughs> You're not a YouTuber. Uh, <laughs> look, I mean, I can say it, but it's not going to be on my titles. No, not there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I try to put our content there and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so you'll find, it's also a good way to keep updated with all the things that we're doing. Yeah. Uh, you'll find Precision Aerial mentioned there, Flying Labs, Drone Racing, it's all in there. Yeah. Then we have Precision Aerial, the, which is obviously the commercial drone company, which is the holding company now, the group. Yeah. Um, where we just, we're basically putting out their information and content that we've created, some of the projects we've done. 
uh, there's very little on the platform. There's a lot yeah. more that's still in development and will go up. Uh, but it's also a good way to get a feel of just the quality of some of our work and that kind of thing. And yeah, yeah. when I was there, I felt I felt pretty impressed. Yeah, yeah. 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 I would say to people yeah. watching this, go watch the Jacker and the Music Festival thing. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> dope, dope. And then, and then we have Zimbabwe Flying Labs, of course. Yeah. Um, so they will be working specifically on the projects we're doing as Flying Labs Network. Yeah. Um, I think there's only like one video or something up there, but yeah. we'll have a lot more content going up there, um, especially this year and, and going yeah. forward. So the fact that you have three now actually makes it even a conversation in itself. Uh, <laughs> in that, it seems to me like digital means a lot to you, man. It mm. seems, is that just, uh, let's get our reach. Is that a networking thing? Let's get to reach as many people as possible or there's more to it. Yeah, so what I found, especially now, and we all know this, right? Visibility is really important. Yeah. And the best story always wins, okay? The people who are making the most, most noise, regardless of quality, eh? Right? Yeah. <laughs> the people you see the most in your face on your Instagram feed or on whatever platform you're on, those are the ones you gravitate towards. When you yeah. think of a restaurant you want to go to, right? It's yeah. the one you've been seeing. Yeah. It's not the one you haven't heard about that you have to look up and Google all right, and, restaurants and see and the learn. reviews no, and whatnot. No, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. It's the one you've been seeing. It's the one people have been talking about. It's the one people have been tagging. The one with the cool little videos or whatever it is. Yeah. That's what you're going to probably gravitate towards, yeah. right? It's, it's just that kind of thing. You, it's a law of attraction. So we are trying to be more visible, right? Um, we're still not doing hardly as much as we would want to be doing. Yeah. But what we're finding is that the fake is making more noise than the real. So we have to also make noise yeah. if we're saying we're the real thing. People yeah. need to be able to see us. People need because to see a lot of people, yeah. the companies are like, we didn't know you existed. We didn't know you were there. <laughs> yeah. You're coming and saying you're the guys, but we've been yeah, working with the guys. And, and that really becomes your you know fault. I mean? <laughs> and then it's like, oh, okay, we need to be out there. So, yeah. so we're trying. No, that's we're really trying to do great. that and also my background as well um, yeah. which I didn't mention before is I worked in uh, film content creation broadcasting advertising right yeah. that's you know kind of like a so I'll call it video production film yeah, TV yeah. television for almost 10 years right maybe even more, time, more than 10 years before I, before I yeah, yeah. went full time <laughs> tech. so I have a very good understanding of the power of media and content Right. So yeah. I'm just trying to leverage off of that to just, you know, keep our yeah. our pages going. Yeah. That's another thing I love that you mentioned that you mentioned that because mm -hmm. entrepreneurs uh tend to think that things are in silos. So if I leave my job maybe today or if I start a side business, um I can't take the knowledge I have from mm. or from, from whatever thing I've been doing right now. To this new thing i'm pursuing and it's like no man everything is interconnected it all works together so it's fantastic that you brought that up but let's talk drones man you're the drone guy the drone professional the drone expert african drone professional all these titles precision aerial what's your favorite drone right now oh. or is it a segment of drones or you know put me on <laughs> Ah, uh, okay. So my favorite drone right now, yeah, um, is a drone called the Sky Dio Two. Okay, Sky Dio Two. Sky Dio Two. It's a multi rotor drone. Not even it's probably that about that big. Yeah. Um, a Sky Dio is an American company, American brand. Yeah. Uh, America hasn't been doing very well um, in terms of drone development, especially on the on the consumer level. Um, but this one is definitely up there. Yeah. Um, why it's my favorite is because it's taking take all your existing kind of entry level uh, commercial professional drone yeah. and then add in AI into that so this one drone basically flies itself in a sense. Oh. so it focuses more on autonomous flight and a lot less work on the pilot and it can fly into buildings into like you know mine pits and that kind of thing and navigate yeah. itself and not crash into obstacles. And the whole time it's doing that, it's got this um, kind of vision sensing and it's creating 3D maps and models around it the whole time, right? As it's flying and moving and, yeah. and that kind of thing. So for me, I'm like, I can't wait to get my hands on that, yeah. right? There's so many different things I'd like to do um, and experiment with that and really see um you know what it what it can do uh, obviously it has a, an amazing camera and all this other stuff you know all the basics that you expect in a professional high-grade drone yeah but that ai platform on it oof, for me i'm like next level that's it <laughs> that's the level we need to be at and i really want to see and we're moving to a place where just like you mentioned is the pilot's going to be doing a lot less work right 
So this fanciness of saying I'm a pilot, we're moving away from that. Okay? Yeah. The drones are going to be doing autonomous work. So if, it's, if the drone is flying autonomously, why do we need a pilot? All right? Yeah. Um, and also, then you start seeing more of the value on the data. Like I keep mentioning data processing and that kind yeah. of thing. So I'm really looking forward to that. We'll be getting the Sky Duo 2 definitely before the end of this year. We'll have one of those. Yeah. Great. I'm going to come. I'm going to come. Hopefully we can, we can make a video of that when you get your hands on it yeah. and <laughs> make some interesting content about that. Yeah. But really now to, to close our conversation off, um, when, we, when we were talking uh, before actually turning the camera on and just catching up, um, you know, you mentioned something super interesting about uh, drone racing, and that was uh, what did we call it? A full circle moment because your journey starts in you said 2015, right? Mm. 16, you were building the drone racing community, so that's really the formative mm. years of your journey. Mm. And and you were saying you have some interesting things that you have lined up for drone racing in 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 Zim, and just take me through that as we as we close off. Yeah, so look, we started with drone racing and started doing events. Um, at our peak, we maybe did about three or four events in a year. Yeah. Um, it must have been 2017, 2018. Yeah, I remember Com Exposed 2018. Mm. I was, mm. That's when we met, mm. actually. That's oh, when really? We met. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> yeah so, so that was really at our peak, um, but it never took off. Uh, a lot of reasons, just because people didn't have like expendable income and invest in it. People yeah. didn't also get it. <laughs> a lot yeah. of people didn't get yeah. drone racing. Yeah. We're talking about it when people are just like, what is a drone in the first place? <laughs> right? Um, but now we've come to a place where, you know, a lot of people have seen it now. They've seen it for the first time. You know, now drone racing as a sport itself has blown up globally. Yeah. Um, there's drone racing league in America and Europe and Africa. We're sort of a bit of a league, not really Asia, big leagues. And now you have drone racing professionals. So people who get paid to race drones. Oh. Okay, and these guys are earning the same amount of money as like your gamers and that kind of thing, right? <laughs> like like esports. Yeah, exactly, like esports. So Crazy. you'll you'll find that now it's actually another profession, another job you could get into, you know, yeah. if you want to get into drone racing professionally, right? But it requires obviously a lot of learning, training and getting it. Yeah. So what we're doing now is we've already built the network. We're already very well connected in the drone racing space globally. In yeah. the UK, in America and Asia. Because when we started, a lot of these guys were big, especially the world's leading drone racing league. So DRL, the founder of Drone Racing League, is actually a good connection of mine. We connected back when he was still building it, yeah. right? Um, and now they've got endorsements, like multi-million dollar endorsements. And yeah. they've hired people from like F1 and NASCAR to run Drone Racing League. That's how big this is. Yeah. Right. But because of those connections, we've always been like, okay, we're still connected. I still get interviewed on podcasts in the UK and in Asia yeah. and in America as well about drone racing. Then they're trying to find out what's happening in Africa, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. But we're taking all of that. And what we're saying now and what we're looking at doing is through our education program, we're yeah. building up the skill set required right, for us to then transition people into the drone racing side of things. So once you know how to fly, then it's easier to then introduce the, the, the racing drones and encourage people to buy their own or help them to build. Yeah. So our advanced course and our education program is actually going to be teaching young people between 7 and 18 years old how to build or assemble their own drone. Yeah. Right? And particularly, we're using racing drones as yeah. that tool. Once they know how to fly, they know how to code, they know how to assemble their own, then it's easy transition and we'll start up our league yeah. again. So we're looking forward to doing that in the next couple of months or maybe yeah. next year. Um, and then really hopefully fielding a team and being able to have a Zimbabwe uh, drone racing team these things, and then yeah. compete uh, because it's there and maybe even host. I mean, I think maybe that would be brilliant for us to be able to host a drone racing event. That's yeah. very good for tourism as well. Yeah. And yeah. that would yeah. also, you know, attract the right kind of um, media attention that we need um, for this for the space uh, yeah. as drone racing. Yeah, That's fantastic, man. Um, yeah, the big takeaway after having this conversation is it sounds to me like you're a value chain guy man it really does from services assembling repairs pilots training it sounds to me like you're a value chain guy and i hope you win it feels like you're winning so far i hope you keep winning and i hope the next time we have this conversation we're going to be talking of even more amazing things i'm so thankful you've allowed us to uh take your story to the world super honored Thank you for having me on your platform. 
Um, it's always an honor and privilege to share our story and just where we're at and what's going on and hopefully encourage other people to pursue their journey and, and to move. Like if you have any idea and thing that you want to work on, don't doubt yourself. Like, yeah. like for me, you know, one of the things even at the end of this, just something that came to mind is that um, it's really important to believe in yourself. And it's hard when you, when you have something that people don't understand. You know, you talk to people yeah. around you and they're like, oh, okay, well, all right. Uh, okay, cool, great. Uh, you know, and people don't get it. Yeah. You know? um, and for me, the point at which I started to see value in myself and in, in being able to recognize that I had added value to myself yeah. and that what I had was valuable is probably late 2018. Yeah. You know, beginning of 2019, sorry. When we were approached by a group of uh, investors in South Africa, who yeah. I mean, they they heard me speak at a conference, um, and then they invited me to South Africa to have a meeting, and we went to South Africa and you know did a presentation and yeah. showed them, you know, this is what we're doing and what we want to do, and they basically made an offer to buy us outright, and said, look, we'll buy Precision Aerial, we want you to move to South Africa, <laughs> and uh, we shut shop in Zimbabwe. And come, let's do it here because there's a lot more opportunities here and that kind of thing. And I'm like, well, look, we'll pay you value for whatever you built. Give us a figure of what you think your, your thing is worth. <laughs> Give it to you. Come here and come run this thing with us. We want yeah. the name. We want everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, I'm like, whoa. Okay. <laughs> That's crazy. You must <laughs> the see blank something check is... <laughs> in, in me for you to make that kind of offer. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. in the end, we didn't take the offer. And yeah. I'm glad we didn't. But... To know that someone is willing or a group of people willing to do that was like, whoa, guys. Right? And that is the height of entrepreneurship, isn't it? Mm. That's essentially going public that we've sold it yeah. and I've gone on holiday or I've gone to work on other things. Mm. Some, that, those are the romantic <laughs> ideas that people have when yeah, they think yeah. of entrepreneurship. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic, man. I've yeah. learned so much from you today. Thanks. Thanks again. Mm. Cool. Thank you. Fantastic. Thanks for having me, guys.